welcome to the uh, third um, topic in this video series where I'll be introducing the matrix and thinking about what is a matrix product. All right, so essentially a matrix is nothing more than a grid of numbers, simply a grid of numbers that could be positive or negative or fractional or zeros. And when we uh, specify the shape of our grid of numbers, or we do so simply by stating how many rows we have and how many columns. So we're going to hear about rows and columns a lot in this video. Um, in this video course I'm going to use a particular uh, way of writing a matrix as a symbol. When I need to do that I'm going to just use a capital letter and I'm going to, the letter is going to be double underlined. I'll double underline that symbol. So here we go. A underline underline. That means the matrix A. And how would we write it? Uh, so that's uh, just like this, essentially a grid of numbers and we put it in curvy brackets just to give it some structure. So this is three rows, two columns, that one. Here's a matrix B. Let's make it a square matrix. Let's put in a fraction to show we can. Minus 10, 0. Okay. So there are two different examples of a matrix. Easy enough, but uh, it gets more interesting when we try and combine them. So I want to talk about matrix um, multiplication. <clears throat> addition is simple and it's just uh, element by element addition, but multiplication is not so uh, simple. So here's how we write it. The multiplication of matrix A by matrix B is simply written like this, AB and it gives us some new matrix C, which may be a different uh, shape from both A and B, as we'll see. Let's give ourselves a couple of examples. Um, uh, 3, 0, minus 1, 2, 3, 4. And matrix B can be just um, 1, 2, 0, minus 3. So there are our two matrices. Here I've chosen them such that A, B, that multiplication will work. It will exist. But actually, if we try it the other way round, it will turn out that the multiple, the multiple of those two matrices doesn't even exist. It's not a well-defined thing. So this is an extreme case of an operation uh, not being reversible in its order. In other words, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Okay. So uh, let's just erase that and go ahead and see how the multiplication actually works. The trick is to multiply the each row of matrix A, the first matrix, by each entire column of matrix B. What does that mean? Well, let's write out our example 3, 2, 0, 3, minus 4, uh, minus 1, minus 1, 4, uh, 1, 0, 2, minus 3, now I know that this guy is going to have uh, three rows and two columns, the output matrix. You'll see why in a bit. I'll just put these blanks in for now. The question is how to work out each of these numbers. Let's choose this one first. Okay. Now notice this guy's address, if you like, is row one, column one of the output matrix C. I'm going to need to, in order to work this guy out, I'll need to look at the whole of um, row one in the first matrix, in matrix A, and the whole of column 1 in the matrix B. I'll need to combine those guys. And how do I get, combine them? I just multiply element by element as I go along the row and down the column. So 3 times 1 just gives me 3. And then I add on the next combination. 2 times 2 is 4. So 3 plus 4 is going to give me 7. That's how I combine those two. I'll jump back here and I'll erase there and I'll just put in my 7. Alright, so that's the, the general way it works. Let's go ahead and do the other elements of our matrix C. Let's do this one. Notice this is still row 1, so I want that first row. It's now column 2, that's its address, so I want the second column. 3 times 0 and 2 times minus 3 is how I'll work that out, and that's just going to be minus 6. So let me jump backwards um, and erase my blank symbol and write in minus 6. Okay, maybe I went a bit fast. Let me um, spell this one out more explicitly. Oh, 
Okay, so here I now have row two, column one. That's the address of that guy. I want all of row two and all of column one. I want to look at those guys and I want to multiply along. So zero times one and three times two. That's going to give us just six in total when we add them up. So let me erase and put in six. And now this element, that's uh, row two, column two. So I want all of row two, I want all of column two. I multiply zero times zero. And uh, three times minus three is minus nine. So that's going to be a minus nine. If I go backwards and just put in minus nine here. Now we're finally onto the final third row. So we're going to want the third row of A, and in this case the first column. So that's 1 times minus 1, and 4 times 2 is 8. That's going to be 7, minus 1 plus 8. And then finally, last row, last column, uh, 4 times minus 3 is 12, and then 0, minus 12. All right, so there we are. That is our matrix product C formed by combining each row and each column. It's quite a lot of work, and it would be even more if we had bigger matrices. But we said that um, we get something quite different if we try multiplying A and B in the other order. So let's go ahead and do that now. What if we have 1, 0, 2, minus 3? That's B. Onto 3, 2, 0, 3, minus 1, 4. That's A. So we can try it. We try it and multiply it row 1 by column 1, and we immediately find we cannot because they are a different length, a different list. So there is no third element of our row to multiply with our third element of the column. Just pause the video here um, and have a look at that and see why that must be impossible for us. And so sometimes matrix multiplication is impossible. All right, let's look at a few uh, little um, further examples, and you may want to pause the video to convince yourself in each case it's true. Is this thing possible, for example? Pause it and think. This one is not possible. This is not possible, again, because there are two elements in, say, the first row of A and three elements in the column, the single column of B. There's no way to do that as a series of element-by-element -element products. How about this? We just have this uh, row matrix and this column matrix. Can we do that? Yes, this one is perfectly possible. Actually, it just produces a single number. In fact, it's a bit like a like a um, a dot product. It's the whole of row one times which is the entire matrix, um, and then the whole whole of uh, column one in B. This thing is called a row matrix, and this other guy is called a column matrix for obvious reasons. Okay, how about this? Let's have a look at this one. What if I swap the order of my row and column? I just swap them around. Can I do that? Is that going to produce a legitimate matrix? Actually, yes it will. This time, swapping our two matrices A and B around has produced um, something that, which exists. It's actually a huge matrix. It's three by three. It must have three rows and three columns because A has three rows and B has three columns. How does it work? Let's look at that guy, for example. It's just simply the number there, which is row one is just a number, and column two is just a number, single number. So we just do that product. There's no problem. Pause the video if it's confusing. All right. So again, the point here is that um, A times B is generally not equal to B times A. Even if they both exist, they may not be the same. They may not even be the same shape. Uh, however, we can go on and ask about the other kinds of pro properties of the matrix product operation. A onto B times C, is that the same as A times B onto C? Does the order matter? Actually, it is the same. It does work. In other words, we have the associative property. How about A into B plus C, sum of two matrices? Yes, we can have A onto B plus A onto C. That is therefore the distributive uh, property. Matrix multiplication does satisfy those things, it's just not commutative. Okay, let me make a bit more room up here in the top of the screen and put one final puzzle up. Suppose I have this two row, three column matrix and then a mystery matrix M and then I have a simple column matrix of two rows and I'm asking what shape should matrix M be, or is it even, is it is it possible? Pause and think about that. And in fact, it's just a column matrix of three elements. You may want to uh, just meditate on that and see that it's correct. Okay, that's the end of this video.